For decades, the public face of technology has been shaped by shiny consumer products, friendly operating systems, and polished interfaces designed for everyday users. But behind every app you open, every website you load, every video you stream, and every cloud service you rely on, there is an invisible world of servers working non-stop. In recent years, something quiet but extremely significant has been happening in that hidden layer of the internet. One by one, many of the world's biggest tech companies have been moving their servers to Linux, often without press releases, without announcements, and without making it a headline story. This shift is not sudden, and it is not accidental. It is the result of years of technical evolution, economic pressure, security concerns, and philosophical alignment with how modern computing actually works. To understand why tech companies are quietly moving their servers to Linux, you first need to understand what servers really are and how different they are from personal computers. A server is not designed to look good or feel friendly. It is designed to be reliable, fast, secure, scalable, and predictable. A server might run for years without ever being rebooted. It might handle millions of requests per second. It might exist only as a virtual machine inside a massive data center never touched by human hands. In that environment, the priorities of an operating system change completely. Visual polish becomes irrelevant. Stability, control, and efficiency become everything. Linux was never designed to dominate desktops in the way Windows or Mac OS were. From the very beginning, Linux was built as a Unix-like system focused on multi-user environments, networking, permissions, and modular design. These qualities made it almost perfectly suited for server workloads long before cloud computing became mainstream. As the internet grew, Linux quietly grew with it, powering web servers, databases, email systems, and infrastructure that users never directly saw. By the time most people were still arguing about desktop operating systems, Linux had already won the server room. One of the biggest reasons tech companies move servers to Linux is control. With proprietary operating systems, companies are dependent on vendors for updates, features, security patches, and licensing terms. That dependency can be risky at scale. When you operate tens of thousands or even millions of servers, a license and change or forced upgrade can cost billions. Linux, being open source, removes that dependency. Companies can see the source code, modify it, optimize it, and strip it down to exactly what they need. They are not waiting for permission. They are not locked into a roadmap controlled by someone else. This control becomes especially important for companies operating at massive scale. Google, Amazon, Meta, Netflix, and countless others do not run stock operating systems. They run heavily customized Linux distributions tailored to their specific workloads. They tune the kernel for performance, modify scheduling behavior, optimize memory management, and integrate deeply with their internal tooling. Linux gives them the freedom to treat the operating system not as a product, but as a foundation. Another critical reason is cost, though not in the simplistic way many people assume. Linux itself is free to download, but running servers is never free. The real cost of infrastructure lies in hardware, power, cooling, networking, maintenance, and engineering time. However, licensing fees at scale are not trivial. Paying per core or per server licensing costs to a proprietary vendor can become a massive recurring expense. By using Linux, Companies eliminate those fees and redirect that money into engineering talent and infrastructure improvements instead. Beyond licensing, Linux also enables better hardware utilization. Because it can be stripped down and optimized, Linux can run efficiently on a wide range of hardware, from low-power ARM servers to high-end x86 machines with dozens of cores. It can be tuned to minimize overhead, allowing companies to squeeze more performance out of the same physical machines. When you operate data centers at global scale, even small efficiency gains translate into enormous savings. Security is another major factor driving the quiet migration to Linux in the server world. Security is not about antivirus pop-ups or consumer-focused protections. It is about minimizing attack surfaces, controlling permissions, auditing processes, and responding quickly to vulnerabilities. Linux excels in this environment. Its permission model is mature and battle. Its modular design allows unnecessary components to be removed entirely. Its open source nature means vulnerabilities are often discovered and patched quickly by a global community of developers and security researchers. Tech companies also value transparency. With Linux, they can audit the code themselves or hire experts to do so. They are not blindly trusting a black box. This transparency is especially important for companies handling sensitive data, financial transactions, healthcare records, 
or government contracts. Being able to prove how a system works and how it is secured is increasingly important in a world of compliance and regulation. Reliability is another pillar of the Linux advantage. Servers cannot afford frequent crashes or forced reboots. Linux has earned a reputation for stability under heavy, continuous workloads. It is common to find Linux servers with uptimes measured in years. This reliability is not accidental. It comes from a design philosophy focused on long-running processes, predictable behavior, and conservative changes in critical components. While no system is perfect, Linux has proven itself repeatedly in the harshest environments. Scalability is equally important. Modern tech companies do not operate a handful of servers. They operate fleets that scale up and down dynamically based on demand. Linux integrates naturally with automation tools, orchestration platforms, and container technologies. Tools like Kubernetes, Docker, and countless configuration management systems were built first and foremost with Linux in mind. In fact, much of modern cloud-native infrastructure assumes Linux at its core. Containers are a particularly important part of this story. Containers rely on Linux kernel features like namespace and groups to isolate processes and manage resources. While container-like technologies exist on other platforms, Linux is the native environment where they perform best and most efficiently. As companies shift from traditional virtual machines to containerized workloads, Linux becomes the obvious choice. It is not just compatible with modern infrastructure, it is the reason modern infrastructure works at all. Another reason tech companies move quietly is that, from their perspective, Linux is not news. It is infrastructure. Announcing that you are using Linux is like announcing that you are using electricity or fiber optic cables. It is assumed in many cases. Companies made the switch years ago and simply never talked about it because it was not relevant to their brand messaging. Consumers care about apps, features, and experiences, not about the operating system running on a server thousands of miles away. That is also a competitive aspect to this silence. Infrastructure choices can reveal strategic priorities. If a company has developed a custom Linux distribution or unique optimizations, those are competitive advantages. Sharing too much detail could give competitors insights into how they operate. As a result, many companies contribute to open source projects while keeping their internal implementations private. The rise of cloud computing has further accelerated the move to Linux public. Cloud providers overwhelmingly use Linux as the underlying operating system for their infrastructure. When companies migrate workloads to the cloud, they often find that Linux-based environments are the default best supported option. This creates a feedback loop. Developers become more familiar with Linux. Tools are built around Linux. Best practices assume Linux. Over time, it becomes the path of least resistance. Even companies historically associated with proprietary operating systems have embraced Linux on the server side. Microsoft is one of the most notable examples. Today, a large percentage of workloads running on Azure use Linux. Microsoft actively contributes to the Linux kernel, maintains its own Linux distributions, and supports Linux as a first-class citizen in its cloud offerings. This shift was not ideological. It was pragmatic. Customers wanted Linux, and the economics and technical benefits were undeniable. Another often overlooked factor is talent. Modern engineers, especially those working in cloud, DevOps and backend roles, are trained on Linux universities teach Linux. Online courses teach. Linux open source projects run on Linux. Hiring engineers who are comfortable with Linux is easier than training large teams to work around its absence. For tech companies competing for top talent, aligning with the tools engineers already use is a smart move. Linux also aligns well with automation and infrastructure as code practices. Servers are no longer configured manually. They are defined in code, deployed automatically, monitored continuously, and replaced rather than repaired. Linux fits this model perfectly. Its configuration files are tech. Its behavior is scriptable. Its tooling integrates cleanly with automation frameworks. This makes it ideal for modern, large-scale operations where human intervention is minimized. Energy efficiency is another growing concern. Data centers consume vast amounts of electricity, and even small improvements in efficiency matter. Linux allows companies to fine-tune power management Sepe with scheduling and resource usage in ways that proprietary systems often do not expose. As sustainability becomes a business priority, the ability to optimize at a low level becomes increasingly valuable. 
there is also a cultural element at play. Many tech companies were founded by engineers who grew up using Linux or Unix-like systems. The open source ethos of collaboration, transparency, and shared improvement aligns with how many technology organizations see themselves. Using Linux is not just a technical decision, it reflects a mindset that values flexibility and community-driven innovation. Despite all these advantages, the move to Linux is rarely framed as a dramatic migration. It usually happens gradually. A new service is launched on Linux, a legacy system is replaced, a data center is upgraded. Over time, Linux becomes the default. There is no single moment where a switch is flipped. This gradual transition is another reason it happens quietly. From the outside, it may seem like nothing has changed. Apps still work. Websites still load. Services still run. But under the surface, the foundation of the digital world is increasingly lit. This matters because infrastructure shapes what is possible. Linux enables rapid experimentation, global scaling, and resilient systems. It allows companies to move faster, adapt more quickly, and respond to failures with minimal disruption. Looking ahead, this trend is unlikely to reverse. If anything, Linux's role in server infrastructure will continue to grow. Emerging technologies like edge computing, artificial intelligence, and high-performance computing all rely heavily on Linux. As workloads become more specialized and demanding, the need for a flexible, transparent, an efficient operating system becomes even more critical. In the end, tech companies are not moving their servers to Linux because it is trendy or ideological. They are doing it because Linux solves real problems at scale, it offers control without lock-in, efficiency without compromise, security with transparency, and stability under extreme demands. The reason it happens quietly is simple. For the companies making these decisions, Linux is no longer a bold choice. It is the obvious one.